Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar with Fairy Godboss and Lisa Lewis of Career Clarity. We are going to let everyone um, log in. A lot of folks joining us today. We're super excited. While everyone logs in and gets set up, um, for those of you on, if you could do me a huge favor and just drop in the Slack that you can hear me okay, um, just to make sure that, you know, Lisa and I are not just talking to each other. <laughs> Great, thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Yvonne. And for any of you who are already chiming in here, We've got another minute or two before we get started, but it would be great to get to know who you are, where you're joining us from. So if you don't already have the chat up, um, go ahead and use, if you're on your, your desktop, you'll see a little bar at the bottom of your screen that'll have a chat icon in it. And if you are logging in on your phone, if you swipe over to the space where you can see panelist faces, and then you click on, I believe the word is participants, and then you click on chat, it should let you then be able to log in and participate and interact with us. Thank you, Job Girl, for letting us know that you can hear and see everything. That's super helpful. We can't wait to get started. Yes. And I'm also going to share, a lot of you should have received a worksheet from Lisa, for me, from Lisa yesterday to guide us through um, today's workshop. Lisa has a super interactive presentation for us that we're really excited about. So I'm just gonna drop it here in the chat for anyone who needs it. Hey Liz, thank you for joining us. All right, well it is 1230, so let's go ahead and officially, officially get started, but please continue to feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat as we continue. So my name is Mary and I'm with the Fairy God Boss team and we are so excited to be here today. Um, for those of you who don't know Fairy God Boss, we are the largest career community for women and we provide a variety of free resources um, to help women at all stages in their career, um, like today's workshop with Lisa. Um, so, oh, so many folks. We have Jenny from Green Bay, Heidi from Portland, Katie in Austin, Erica in Manhattan. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, so a few housekeeping items. If you have a question, you can feel free to use the chat or use the Q&A function as well. You also have the option of sharing anonymously too. Um, we will be recording this and emailing it out to you all afterward on how you can stay in touch both with Fairy God Boss and Lisa. And we're super excited that Lisa has a group on Fairy God Boss, so we will send that to you all as well. So um, you can continue the conversation there. And so without further ado, I am going to hand it over to our guest of honor, Lisa Lewis, with um, Career Clarity. Hello, everybody. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me and see me. Um, I just got kicked out temporarily of the Zoom room. So if that happens, just sit tight. I will come back and hop right back into our presentation here. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Um, and I'm so thrilled to get to do this with all of you. So we have a ton of information that I want to cover in this hour. And I know how precious and valuable your time is. And I'm so grateful that you are giving that to Fairy God Boss and to me. And I want to make the most of it. So we are going to be flying through some awesome content here, but I'd really like for as much as we can to also have some good healthy conversation in the chat box. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to accomplish together in the next hour or so. By the end of today's session, we are going to have three things accomplished. Thing number one is we're going to be help you to become familiar with models for adult career development and progression because yes, they exist and no, nobody talks about them. Thing number two that we're going to do is that you'll be introduced to three-ish, and you'll understand the ish here in a minute, specific exercises to start crafting your own personal vision segment or your why. So you're going to walk away from this with a working beginning draft document that you can keep playing with and refining and iterating on over time. And then thing number three is that we'll have you walk away from this with a series of questions and exercises and ideas that you can use whenever you need them to help you start to navigate and path through stuck periods throughout your career and life. Now, like I just said, 
one of our goals is going to be to treat this a little bit more like a workshop than a presentation. So if you don't have a place open to take notes, whether that is something analog, like pen and paper, or whether it's something digital, please do that. And if you haven't already, go ahead and open up the Google Doc that Mary sent out in the email prior to the session. Um, and Mary, you could actually just drop that back into the chat just in case there is anybody who uh, is just adding, jumping in now. Perfect. Thanks so much, Mary, that you've got that in your hot little hands. But we're not going to need that for the first 20 minutes or so. So stick with me here, and then we'll start diving into some of those exercises together. So if you have not already, we've already had a couple people chiming in, like Jennifer and Rolanda and Ingrid. Um, if you could let us know who you are and where you're joining from, so I get a sense of who's in the room. Um, if you are on a desktop device, you will see something that looks like this at the bottom of your screen. should have a little button that says chat. And then you should be able to either click on everyone or all panelists and participants to be able to share. Or if you are joining us on your phone, you should be able to swipe over to the panel that has uh, my face on it and Mary's face on it and then click on participants at the bottom and then click on chat there. Hello to Kate and Tiffany and Denise and Crystal and Jennifer and Danielle and Gladys. I'm so glad you are all with us today. Now, as you're introducing yourselves, it would only be fair for me to introduce myself too. Um, so there's a question of both who I am in this moment and who I am relative to you today. So who I am is this Brune over here. This is my adorable little sister, Kelly. And things that it's important for you to know about me are that I'm Lisa. I'm joining you from lovely scenic Denver, Colorado today. I am a recovering perfectionist, obsessive learner, fellow overachiever, English breakfast tea lover, INTJ for any of you Myers-Briggs junkies out there like me, and a definite Ravenclaw. And with respect to why I'm here today, I'm a career change coach who is obsessed with helping create a happier workforce. And I've supported more than 500 people in making big, bold, badass career transitions. And I want to be able to share even just a fraction of the knowledge and the experience that I've had over the past years with all of you today. And hello to Brittany and Kathy and Stephanie and Annie and Ishita. You'll have to let me know how I did on pronunciation there. Now, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about crafting career vision statements is that back when I first started out in my career, I did not have a good vision. I remember the very beginning of my career, I was living and working in New York City at an ad agency, and I was feeling a little bit like it was soulless for me, and I wanted to feel more passion and connection to my work. So I moved to Washington, D.C. to run digital marketing initiatives for a nonprofit. And I thought to myself, this is going to fix everything, right? I'm going to find more purpose in my work. It's going to be great. But purpose wasn't enough. I have to tell you this story because I feel like it sort of uh, encapsulates the experience that I had at the nonprofit. I was helping them do their website redesign work, and I was wanting to help them build a website that would help generate more excitement, more interest, and then generate more donations to the organization so they could serve more people. And there was a moment when I had noticed that the culture at this organization didn't exactly feel like it was serving me and wanted my life. And I remember walking into the director of development's office to show her my proposal for the website based on all this research about best practices and how to make you know, the most persuasive, compelling, impactful statement about who we were and what we were doing. And so I went through my whole presentation and so the director of development started to give me some thoughts on like, well, I don't really like that we're doing that. And I said, well, you know, I understand that personal preferences can shift, but this is a best practice. And I remember she said to me, Lisa, I don't care about the best practices. If I tell you to put Mickey Mouse on the front page of our website, it's your job to do it. And as you might imagine, that didn't exactly sit well with me, especially knowing that I thought I had made this move to try to create more purpose in my life. And so not only was I feeling unhappy and like I was not living out any sense of purpose or mission or fulfillment, but I was also underpaid and lost on where to go next. I didn't have a career vision statement to help me see where can I go from here that'll still keep the good stuff and keep building on that without 
having to deal with toxic culture issues that are getting in the way of me being able to make an impact. And I wanna be able to bring that to all of you today. So we gotta start with this question of, what is a career vision and a career vision statement? So I went to the beauty of Wikipedia to get us a working definition to start with. And they talked about a vision statement in a much more sort of broad general way. And we're gonna specify it a little bit more for our purposes today. But a vision statement writ large is a declaration of an organization's objectives, ideally based in economic foresight, intended to guide its internal decision-making processes. So we can think of your vision and what we're be developing today as an inspirational idea of the future that you want to help guide your decision-making process and help you in a lot of ways to pre-make some decisions about what you want and what you want to move towards in your career versus the things that you don't really want and you don't want to move towards in your career. But I think that this perhaps summarizes why it's important to have a vision statement better than anything else I've ever seen. Let me know in the chat if anybody has already seen this meme but it is a meme that says, when I grow up, I want to be exhausted all the time, out of shape, work at a job that I hate, have no free time to do the things that I love, and be drowning in debt, said no one ever. And how many people, just let me know in the chat, how many people know somebody who this statement might actually describe? That they might have been leaning into what they thought was a good career path for them, and they're in a space where they're exhausted, they're not sleeping well, they don't love their work, they feel like they don't have any time to do anything that they love. Yeah, Christine, Kathy, Jenny, Julia, Katie. Yeah, I'm seeing a cascade of yeses over here. Mm. And I can so feel for some of you for whom that's been you, you know, whether it's somebody that you're seeing in your ecosystem or whether that's actually your lived experience right now. Yeah, I hear you on that. And this is not where we want to be, right? And we don't go off track and off mission on purpose. This kind of mission drift happens when life pops up and gets in the way and we get distracted by other stuff and we're not crystal clear on who it is or what it is that we're wanting in our career paths, which is why you being here right now to do this work is so awesome and so important. Yeah, I and mean, totally, life happens. Yeah, and that totally, love it. So let me talk to you about a little bit of a philosophical foundation for the vision work that we're gonna do today. Um, I hate coming onto a primarily badass women's platform and talking about an old white guy, but from a philosophical foundation, I think that he gives us some really interesting things to dig into together. And so let me ask in the chat, does anybody know who this dapper elderly young dude, young dude, elderly dude is here? Anybody know who the king of vision is? And I will give you some hints because I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity in the chat. Um, he is uh, an economist. He's an Austrian economist. And so this idea of vision actually comes from the space of looking at behavioral change with respect to values and money. We've got one from Annette who says, yes, but I can't remember his name. His name is Ludwig von Mises. And he has this tome of a book that he wrote on human action. And there's a specific chapter in it where he talks about what he calls the human action model, which is the three piece process that spurs anybody into making a shift in their lives. And there are three components of the human action model. He says component number one is that you have to have some uneasiness with the status quo. Right? If everything is rainbows and puppy dogs and you're feeling really contented and fine in your current day-to-day -day life, you have no interest in making a shift and making a change in things. But if you're feeling like things are not feeling quite so hot for you, then that uneasiness and that distress or pain or dissatisfaction is going to be a really good spur to start you into motion. So that's only one piece of the puzzle. Piece number two of the puzzle is that you have to have a vision of what a better state could look like and could be. And if you don't have an inspirational vision of what better might be out there, what might be possible for you, it's gonna be real hard to take action. And let me ask you this, chime in in the chat box if you know anybody like this. You know somebody who is uneasy and dissatisfied with their current job and has do, done jack to shift anything in their life because their vision and their thoughts about what's possible out there are so limited that they feel like they just have to settle. 
that they just have to do exactly what's in front of them because there are no other choices and other options. Jenny's saying, yep, for sure. Liz, I hear you. Yeah, being scared of change and risk is a real thing. And that's actually component number three that we're gonna talk about here. Yeah, Rolanda, I hear you. Kara, totally, Stephanie. Again, so, so happy that you're here and taking this all in. And Kara, I think it was you who brought this up. To your point, we have uneasiness with where you are right now, and you have a vision and a dream of where you wanna go. It's not necessarily enough until you have piece number three which is the belief that your behavior can lead you from point A to point B. And notice that in Von Mises' model here, he's not talking about that you have to have the perfect plan all mapped out to get you from here to there. It's purely the belief that it's possible for you to go from here to there that then can spur incredible things to happen. And sometimes that belief is constrained by fears and worries about finances, fears and worries about uh, failure or maybe even success and sometimes. So one of the things that is so critically important is cultivating a vision of what's possible and a vision of a better state that is bigger than your fear and that makes it worth it to actually expose yourself to some small scale and manage risks to see what else could be out there for you. Now with all of this you might be thinking to yourself the economy is evolving real, real fast right now. There are jobs out there in the marketplace that didn't even exist five years ago, in industries that didn't even exist 20 years ago. How can I design a vision, an inspirational idea of the future that will actually keep up with me and will keep up with the pace of the economy? And it's an important question that we have to talk about before we start crafting all of your vision statements. And what we have to talk about in order to talk about that is our Learning objective number one for our session today, which is teaching you about the adult developmental life cycle. Because one of the biggest misconceptions about a vision is that it has to stay perfectly fixed for your entire life. And that's just not true. And it's also not accurate to what our experience of the work world and the experience of being, living, breathing, growing adults is. Because I'm gonna go ahead and guess, anybody who took the time to show up live or to watch the recording about how to craft a career vision statement is somebody who likes to learn and they like to grow, right? <laughs> Let me know in the chat box if that is true for you. If you are the sort of person who enjoys personal development, professional development, and you want to keep evolving in your life. Because if you are a person, oh my gosh, look at the cascade of yeses coming in. Totally. Rialima, Julia, Suzanne, Whitney. Oh, hey, Whitney, that's so great. Michelle, Heidi. Yeah, if you like learning and growing, you need a career strategy and a career vision that also has space for learning and growth, right? So let's talk about what that could look like. So let me actually back up here. So the adult developmental life cycle is a model that was developed by the Hudson Institute in response to something which I think we all probably know and we may not have put our fingers on, which is that in the world of psychological research and neuroscience, there is a huge amount that is done on like the moment that you become alive, like from embryo stage until being age 18. Tons of developmental research on different stages of life and things that shift for you and what to expect. And there's a really healthy amount of research that's been done on what happens from the sort of aging process to when we eventually pass on. So from, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s on, there's a ton of research about what happens there. And there is shockingly little research about what happens between 18 and 70. And so the Hudson Institute recognized this and what they decided to do was synthesize the work from a couple of famous, not a couple, a bunch of famous research psychologists, Dr. Eric Erickson, Dr. Eric Blemholtz, all sorts of people to try to craft a, an explanation of some of the things that happen in terms of adult development and growth over those decades and decades of life. So they came up with a four stage cycle that I'm gonna share with you today. So stage number one that adults go through in development, and let me also say too that while we're talking about this in the career context, this is actually so much bigger than career. This happens in all sorts of different areas in your life. This will happen in relationships, it'll happen in health, it'll happen in the way, if you're a parent, in the way that you parent, but we'll talk about it in the career context for this example. 
But the first stage of development is that you hop into the launch stage. And this is the stage where everything feels shiny and new and exciting, where you're ready to get out of bed in the mornings and do work, where you kind of want to be leaning into things after hours to learn more because there's lots of intrinsic motivation and curiosity happening. It can a lot of times be described as sort of the honeymoon phase when everything feels cool and great and exciting. And there's a lot of energy and a lot of good feelings. And we want to stay in the launch stage for as long as we can. But what inevitably happens over time is that your life and priorities and needs will start to grow and change and take on a trajectory. And then the opportunity or the job or the project that you're doing will also take on a trajectory. Sometimes it's a trajectory of growth, sometimes it's a trajectory of stagnation. And what starts to happen as time passes is that you will go on one trajectory and the opportunity will go on another trajectory and there starts to become a gap, right? You used to, when you first started, you were super aligned, everything felt great, but now you have come into this gap. And at some gaps, things are sort of okay, where you're like, well, my boss isn't perfect, or like, okay, that person on my team is not good at deadlines, so that's gonna be a thing that I'll have to manage. And then sometimes you get to a breaking point where you have grown in such a direction and the opportunity has progressed in such a direction that there's actual pain involved. There's frustration, there's anger, there's sadness, there's all sorts of things, disappointment that comes up. And when you hit that pain threshold where things cannot keep keeping on, keeping on, and something to shift, you move into the second stage of the adult developmental life cycle, which is called the doldrums. And I will tell you, it is about as much fun as it sounds like it is. The doldrums is where you've hit that pain threshold and you're just feeling it. You are allowing yourself to feel the feels. You're not in denial. You're not trying to minimize them. You are letting them wash over you. And the reality of your situation is fully, fully embodied for you. And the doldrums are a really important stage of this progression because you can either stop and sit in the doldrums and park in the doldrums and just be there and be bitter and resentful and frustrated and blah. Or you can use the doldrums as an invitation to take action and make a shift. And if you choose to say, well, I don't really want to stay in the doldrums forever. I'm ready to start taking some action to change my life and figure out how to get back into a better energy space and get back into alignment, that is where you move into stage number three of the adult developmental model, which is called cocooning. Cocooning is where you go full introspective. You start diving into who am I in this stage of life? What do I want? What do I value? And most importantly, what do I prioritize that might be different from when I first started out in the launch of whatever this job or this project was? I oftentimes when I talk about cocooning, talk about the chrysalis process for a butterfly. Um, and if anybody knows about this, uh, chime in in the chat, but don't give any spoilers here. So when a caterpillar is becoming a butterfly, it creates its little chrysalis cocoon. And what happens inside of that is that the caterpillar liquefies. All of its cells go to goo, except for its leg cells, which is super weird, but all the rest of its cells go into this sort of like goo phase where any cell can then come back together and recrystallize into a butterfly, right? So an, an eyeball cell from the cocoon or from the caterpillar can become a wing cell in the butterfly. And I think that there's something so magical about knowing that weird biological process happens because it can happen for you too within your own cocooning space. You don't have to be anchored to just what you used to be doing or making little marginal changes or increases. You can think about the big quantum leap shifts that can happen in your life to get you into alignment with what you want and what kind of a life you want to be creating for yourself. And from there, once you start to come up with some ideas of what that life is and what might get you back into alignment with your priorities and values, you move into the last phase of the cycle, which is called preparation. And that's where you start seeding the ground with possibilities that could bear fruit and turn into your next launch. It's essentially a risk management part of this and a transition part of this where we get you into your next launch. And I wanna share this with all of you today and I felt like it was super important because 
this cycle doesn't stop, right? You don't get off of this merry-go-round. If you are a growth-oriented person, you are gonna go through this cycle tens of times in your career, maybe even more than that. You might go through it at a macro level or a micro level. But the point of this is that the launch phase is where you move towards whatever you feel like your potential vision is in this moment that's in alignment with who you are in this moment. And then you allow for that to be good as long as it can be. And then you let yourself go into the doldrums of, oh, oh crap, I got to change something. And then you let yourself go into the cocooning phase to say, okay, what needs to shift? Does the vision need to shift? Do I need to shift? Do both need to change? And you can keep iterating on this to get closer and closer to your authentic truth and your most expressed self in your work in any given time. So let me ask you this again in the chat box. Um, based on these four phases, let me know with where you think that you are in these phases with your current work right now. Are you feeling good and you're in the launch and you want to get more crystallized vision? Are you feeling like you're 100% in the doldrums? Are you feeling like you are in that introspective cocooning soup stage? Or are you preparing, pre preparing for what's next? Ooh, seeing lots and lots of cocooning. A little bit of preparation, that's awesome. So much cocooning, oh my gosh, that's such a good place to be and you are here at exactly the right moment if that's true for you. Now, from there, I also wanna talk about that while we're talking about this in the context of career, one of the things that I have seen, I do career change coaching work, I run a program called Career Clarity, and one of the things that I've seen with my hundreds and hundreds of people who I've worked with is that career ain't just about career, right? It's the question of how it fits into the bigger context of your life and what matters to you, right? And so we can think about vocational health, career health, as something that is a big contributor to your sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. But we also don't wanna look at that in a vacuum, right? If the other pieces of the puzzle for you, whatever they are, are feeling out of whack, then it's gonna be no surprise that career starts to not feel like it's a good fit too. So as we're thinking about crafting a career vision for you, we also wanna think about it as potentially being expansive to include what will make for the good life that career can fit into. Ingrid, I hear you. I'm seeing Ingrid's comment in the chat here saying, I'm trying to get back into the cocooning stage, but I feel like I'm dragged back into the doldrums. Well, a vision statement, just like we were talking about in the human action model of what's possible for you, can oftentimes be the thing you need to start propelling yourself back into cocooning and preparation and launching into that next stage. So you are in the right place. I'm so glad you're here, Ingrid. So last thing to say about that. This is an iterative game. Your career vision today can and probably will evolve and shift. And this exercise and the Google Doc that you all got access to is a great thing to revisit every couple of years to make sure that it aligns with your priorities and values in that season of life. All right, how many people here are um, parents? How many people, let me know in the chat, how many of you are mamas? So I would guess for any of you who are mamas, adult children, very nice, Annette, for any of you who are mamas, your life and your priorities pre-kids were probably wildly different than they were post-kids, right? <laughs> Stephanie, I love it. Dog mama, does that kid, does that count? Yeah, lots and lots of mamas here. And you know that you shift. And if we fight the shifting, that's where more frustration and dissatisfaction comes from. So we wanna ride the shifting and I'll give you some tools to help lean into that. So what we're doing now is shifting into that drafting your vision part of things. So if you have your worksheet, we're about to use the Google Doc. So get excited for that. But there's one thing that I wanna walk you through, which is that third or that, that fourth-ish exercise for today to prime us to get us started with that. So if we think about a vision as being an inspirational idea of the future to guide your decision-making process, then we know that we need to identify these three components to make it complete. Number one is the type of group that you help. Individuals, groups, nations, cities, are they specific types of people? Is it kids? Is it just women? Is it people who are working through a difficult transition of their own? Then we need to figure out the cause or the issue you are trying to make an impact on, help, change, etc. And then thing number three is that we need to identify your specific actions and the contribution that you personally want to make. And all of this ties into what's meaningful for you. 
right? Because a vision is going to be a uniquely specific, intimate thing that's based on who you are and what you value. So we got to figure out what's meaningful for you. And one of the things that I always hear people say in this stage is that they want to help people. Like one of the things that would make things feel so meaningful and juicy and life-giving is helping people. And let me know in the chat box if you would like to help people too, because I typically find that this one is a big, big driver of satisfaction and fulfillment for folks. Anybody in the chat box want to help people? <laughs> of course, of course. Oh, good. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate that. Totally, Whitney. Totally, Stephanie. Yeah. So what we've got to do is figure out what helping and meaning mean to you, because every single job that's available in the economy helps in some way, but it may not be a way of helping that actually feels meaningful to you. So before we start creating your vision, we've got to know what the different ways are that you can derive meaning from your own work. So let's dive into this here. And again, this is a totally interactive and I want to hear from folks in the chat box for sure. So one way that you can derive meaning from your work is by knowing what your values are. And this is stuff that I teach in a really in-depth cool process in my career clarity program, but we will do a super zippy version of it here today. I told you I'm trying to jam pack lots of good stuff in here. So here is a word cloud of words that could be your values. And I'm curious for having anybody hop into the chat box here and just share a couple of words that align with values for you, whether they're up here or not. I know that for me, one of my biggest values is freedom and uh, developing others is a huge, huge value for me. And so I have figured out different moves throughout my career to allow for that to be true. Kate Lynn is chiming in with creativity, curiosity, and honesty being value words. I love it. Job girl with respect. Katie with balance, integrity, positivity, and loyalty. Ooh, Rolanda, I like equipping. Janelle, I like passion. Continuous improvement from Liz Madison's creativity, distinction, positivity, and teamwork. Integrity is coming up for Yvonne. It's got kindness, humor, and altruism. Jot these down somewhere on your worksheet. I know I didn't get a great spot for it because you're going to want to see things as we go here. Um, for focus, it's family, adaptability, and justice. And Annette, don't fret about being different. Um, I think that money and financial security are completely normal things to have as values. And again, totally represent. So you're probably thinking about the legacy stage of your career. And so in the legacy stage of your career, you are probably thinking about how you're coasting into what's next and creating a time when you don't have to worry about working all the time. So financial security and finances make tons of sense here. Yeah, and student loans. Love that, love that. Let's go through a couple really quick other brain primers just to get some more thoughts going about the things that are meaningful for you. It could be your upbringing and cultural roots. And for some people, this might be, I grew up with a, you know, a really great childhood. And so I want to bring some of that greatness and some of that energy into things for other people. It could be that I really identify with being a first generation immigrant. Maybe I really identify with having a parent who struggled with substance abuse issues. It could be, you know, I have a deep uh, social religious background, more of a cultural religious background, and that feels really important to who I am. It could also be identity traits, being a woman, being a mom, being a dog mom, as we had somebody chime in. Uh, it could be age, it could be all sorts of different things that matter to you that help make things feel more or less meaningful to you. It could be the problems in the world that move you. I often, with folks in my Career Clarity program, will talk about what are the things that fire you up that you just can't stop talking about and you want to share with all the time? And what are some of the things that bring tears to your eyes that when you think about this in the world, it really touches your heartstrings in ways that are deeper and more profound than, you know, a lot of the other struggles or challenges in the world. You know, there's no wrong or right answer to this, right? I, I uh, used to feel a little bit guilty. I'm a vegetarian. I used to feel guilty that I didn't actually care more about animal welfare. <laughs> like my vegetarianism, yes, I do care about animal welfare, 
but it comes more from an environmental perspective. But I used to really shake myself like, what's wrong with you? You don't care more about this. And that's okay. There are certain other problems in the world that move me that are why I do what I do. Uh, Yvonne, I love that you're talking about diversity and inclusion. I think that that is becoming so much more at the forefront of people's minds as being important. And it's something that there is tons of up and coming opportunity in right now. So it's awesome that that's on your radar. And one last thing to throw in there that can make work meaningful for you personally is your personal struggles and triumphs. Liz, I love that chiming in with Yvonne there. Your personal struggles and triumphs could be you grew up with ADHD or you grew up with a sibling who has autism or you were not really athletic and then you taught yourself how to do a marathon and you want to teach other people that sort of emotional resilience and mental toughness. You know, they could be big struggles or they could be little struggles, but whatever it is that's true for you can help to define what's meaningful and juicy and life-giving for you too. So now we want to move into our three official exercises for today's crafting your own vision work. Now, if you've already peeked ahead on your worksheet, you probably already saw this and I know it's a little, a little macabre, a little morbid, but stick with me here. When we are thinking about the vision of where you want to be in your life, we have to think about that with respect to the things that you would like to have some time to accomplish in your life and think about your life being so blessed to be long and healthy. And let's say that you happen to know that you're going to pass away peacefully in your sleep at 130 years old. You'll have had all the time to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish professionally and personally in that time. If we use this exercise of doing a hypothetical where we zoom you forward in time and have a retrospective looking back and looking at all the things that you would be so proud to say happened, that can be hugely directional to point you where you want to be going and to help you make some course corrects if you feel like the path that you're on right now is not going to enable you to be able to write that kind of a eulogy. So if you are willing to be playful and a little creative here and go with me on this piece, then uh, we'll go ahead and jump into this exercise. And Mary, if you are uh, still hanging in there, if you could drop in the Google Doc one last time, just in case we've had a couple people jump in who oh. didn't have access to the link, that would be fabuloso. This has a lot of good guidance space and prompts for that. I'll go ahead and start right bringing it up. It is. Wonderful, thank you, Mary, appreciate you. So, the pieces of writing your own eulogy are really straightforward and simple. Piece number one is that you wanna identify the key relationships that you would want a eulogy about you to mention. And we're gonna make it a little bit more career forward, obviously, because we're talking about a career vision here, but I wanted to include all the other people in your life. Kathy, I see your note and we can totally send you a PDF afterwards. Um, or at least a link to the Google Doc that you could be accessing from home afterwards. And so if you just want to jot down the steps here and just do this in your notebook as we go, I have got most of the prompts here up on the screen, but thanks for letting us know. So step one for all of you is just identify the key relationships that you would want to be including in some sort of eulogy, professional or otherwise. So for you, this could be your boss, your coworkers, your clients or customers, the people maybe who receive donations from you, maybe it's business partners, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your kids if you have them or kids if you imagine that by 130 you would have had them. Uh, it could be members of the general public. So go ahead and take a minute here and jot down who these key relationships would be. And like I said, I'm equipping you with a ton of stuff and exercises today. So we're not gonna have time to write out the full eulogy for you for all of these different individuals but just jot down who those individuals are and then we're gonna play with just one of them together here in our time. So once you've jotted down who you think those relationships might be that might be mentioned in a eulogy about you, then we wanna describe how you'd like to be remembered by each relationship type. And this is an exercise that is borrowed from the book Living Forward by Michael Hyatt and Daniel, Daniel Harkavy. So if you're really into this, totally go pick up that book, it's fabulous. But all we want to do is just play with this one or two sentence template for right now, where you plug in the name of a key relationship for you, or you plug in your name, and then you plug in the name of a key relationship for you. 
And then you just flesh out a little bit about what you could imagine you'd like to be remembered for. Let me start by saying there is no wrong or right answer to this. It's just giving yourself permission to be curious and be creative and just play with some things and see how they feel for you when you write them down. You know, I think in the, the Google Doc, for those of you who are looking at it right now, you probably see one of my examples as being Lisa was remembered by her spouse, you know, for always being able to turn off work and be super present and make him know that he was the most important thing in her life. You might also see the one where I, I did a sample for me of Lisa was remembered by her thousands of coaching clients for helping them discover their own power and innate gifting and then shifting the way that they work to be better in alignment with their values. So just give yourself one person and play with this template language of what you might imagine could be written down in your eulogy there. And if we have anybody who is feeling courageous and bold, who's willing to share yours to inspire everybody else, I'd love to have a couple people jump into the chat box and just share what a working draft of one of their eulogy lines might be. And you can flesh it out as much as you want. You can leave it as bare bones and streamlined as you want. Here we go. I already had this slide propped up here, but just plug in what might feel really good to be able to say. And again, remember that we were thinking about this idea of meaning makers and what's meaningful for you for a reason to help prime you to think about what is it that at the ripe old age of 130, when you're looking back on your life, you want to make sure your life was full of. So I'll give you a minute or two just to write, just to think in a little quiet space here. And if anybody is feeling courageous and bold, and like they've got something that they feel like has some, has some momentum or has some interest, please feel free to drop it into the chat box so that other people can see yours and get inspired and get creativity from you too. Oh, Liz, I appreciate you being willing to be so bold and courageous. For anybody who's working on theirs, I'll read this out loud so you can hear it for inspiration. Liz was remembered by her colleagues for her willingness to offer help and support however she could and her authenticity that helped them to feel empowered to be their authentic selves and pay it forward to others in a ripple effect. Love that. And Liz, it sounds like one of your values has got to be authenticity in there. That's awesome. Yeah, Ingrid, love that. Love that. Take another minute or two with this and um, add in your own ideas to the chat here. Oh, nice, Rolanda. Um, I'll read Rolanda's and Tiffany's here too for anybody who's wanting a little bit more inspiration. And for Evan, if you're in view only mode, which everybody should be with the document, if you go up to the file menu, there should be an option to make a copy for yourself. And you can either make a copy as Google Doc or you can make a copy and download it as a, a Word document or I think they would also do, um, what oh, I forget what the Mac one is called, but it'll allow for you to download it that way and have an editable version. Yeah, if I shared an editable document with all 70 of you guys, it would be just mass chaos there. So make your own copy. Perfect. I'll read Rolanda's. Rolanda was remembered by her students for being present, caring, and helping to equip them in leadership. Rolanda, it sounds like one of your values is developing other people. And one of the things that you've actually baked in here is an idea of who, if we back up here, who you might want to serve, the type of group you help. You've already called out students feel really good for you. Let me go back to that page so you all have that for reference. I'll read Tiffany's. Tiffany was remembered by her students, again, awesome, for her creativity and compassion that helped them overcome fears and live courageously. Mm, love that. What would change in the world if we all lived a little bit more courageously, right, Tiffany? And then Colleen chimed in with Colleen was remembered by foster kids. Oh for providing a safe home that helped them get the high school diploma and start college. What an incredible thing. I just got chills on my arms right here. I don't know if you guys can see my little goosebumps. Yeah, wouldn't that be badass to have in your eulogy, right? I love that. Now, if anybody else wants to jump in, please go ahead and share yours in the chat as we go here. But I know we've got 15 minutes left and I have two more tools I wanna make sure to equip you with 
So like we talked about at the beginning, this is a workshop where you're gonna play with things, get a first draft going, but I wanna give you lots of things that you can spend some time with after this session to keep chewing on and working with. And I will also give you information on how to get in touch with me afterwards. So if you wanna share it with me and say, hey, here's what I created, I would be so excited to cheer you on in that way. Um, awesome, awesome. So let me move on to thing number two and three here. Um, and Annette, it makes total sense. You can't see everybody in the chat. Some people are selecting to share with panelists only, meaning me and Mary, and some people are choosing to share with everybody. So if you want to share with everybody, make sure that on that little drop down that you've selected to share with everyone. Here is exercise number two. And what we're doing by doing these three exercises plus that priming meaning maker work at the beginning is we're just trying to find a couple different mechanisms and tools to bring forward stuff that's true for you. So if you just stared at the eulogy thing for the last 10 minutes and you're like, I don't freaking know, this doesn't work for me at all, maybe tools two or three might. And if you love the eulogy stuff, this might add some dimensionality and some different perspective to this. Tool number two here is defining a 10 out of 10. And for this one, I wanna think about it a little bit more siloed in the career space because there'll be some natural sort of tendrils from this to talk about other parts of your life. But this one can be really easy to give yourself a just a gut instinct score on. For those of you who are strong T's on the Myers-Briggs or strong people who have analytical, if you've taken StrengthsFinder, don't overthink this, don't overprocess this. This is a gut feel sort of right brain creativity side of you piece. Your step number one is give yourself a rank between zero and 10 of your satisfaction and fulfillment based on how you're currently feeling and how you're currently measuring your in the moment career success. And if you wanna go ahead and jump in in the chat box to share those numbers too, just so we get a, a read of how people in the room are feeling, that would be fabulous. Give yourself a rank between zero and 10, totally subjective, this is up to you. Caitlin's got a six, Katie's in a six or seven, Tracy the five. Annette, I think this can be um, your career in this moment because we sort of want to be talking about a vision statement that takes you from here towards the inspiring motivation finish line that you want to get to. Yvonne's at an eight, rad. Lots of sevens from Liz and Suzanne. Madison's at a six, Julia's at a nine, like a boss. We've got to hear more about what you're doing over there. Um, and that's at a two, I feel ya, Stephanie's at a seven. Um, and if your present career is stay at home mom, if that feels like a piece of the impact that you wanna have in your life and the vision for how you wanna be creating your life, totally include that. And if you're sort of thinking about where you wanna be next, then you can be thinking about maybe your most recent career or your most recent job and think about that as sort of the springboard to think about what could be next. Yeah, great questions. Now, once you've given yourself a rank between zero and 10, your mission is just to create a definition of what would need to be present to be a 10 out of 10. And go ahead and write it in the present tense. So let's say that I gave myself a six on this. Then perhaps my definition of what would need to be at a 10 out of 10 and what would feel incredible to be stepping into is a day where I say, you know, Lisa is working with clients for about 30 or 40 percent of her day working one-on-one -on -one people helping them to change their lives and the rest of her day she's getting to spend tons of time doing other things that energize her and that could include you know writing long pieces about career fulfillment and satisfaction to share with the masses it could include developing and training other coaches to help spread the gospel and spread my my message and my mission that work doesn't have to suck and there can be really easy, simple ways to get things back into alignment. So that could be what a 10 out of 10 might look like and feel like for me. And I can talk about the feelings that I'd wanna have at a 10 out of 10. I wanna feel calm and peaceful and energized and focused, but not stressed, not angsty, all that good stuff. And again, if you are jotting down your ideas for what a 10 out of 10 would look like and feel like for you, go ahead and spend another minute or two getting a start on that and then drop it into the chat box so that other people can hear about your vision and again, be super inspired. I'm looking over here at our chat. Mm. Julia, I think that's a great distinction that the job is unfulfilling, but you feel satisfied by your, by your performance. So your 10 out of 10 might be, I'm in a space where I feel like I'm challenged and growing every single day. 
and I'm leading with my strengths and gifts, but I'm building on them so that they're not stagnating. I love it. Liz, I love your 10 out of 10. Mo money, opportunity to mentor and coach direct reports, getting regular duties that you're good at and see a benefit to, so definitely leaning into your own gifting there. Going home at the end of the day, having felt productive but not overwhelmed, and that your work has helped others. Awesome, awesome. Anybody else who started jotting down a couple things that would be in their 10 out of 10 that they wanna jump into the chat box and share? I know I wanna to get to the, the next tool too to make sure you all are well equipped after the end of this, but if we've got one more to share for inspiration purposes. Susan, Suzanne, I love you jumping in here. Yours is to inspire and affect positive change, growth and success of your professional circle through leadership and coaching in balance with your personal values. Awesome. And the more specific you can get to be on that, about what kind of positive change, leading and coaching of who, how do you define the people that you want in your professional circle? And then how will you feel at the end of the day? The easier it's gonna to be to then extract out, not just a vision, but also next steps from that. Awesome, so let's move on to tool number three so that we can get you all into drafting a first draft career vision statement before the end of our time together. So thing number three for you is defining success on your own terms. And the first two are a little bit more sort of theoretical in a more creative visioning space. And this one I think is a little bit more concrete. Let me first say this exercise is out of Pivot by Jenny Blake, which is uh, where I first got my first coaching certification and training. Um, and what I'll say is that as you do this exercise, there's a lot of cross pollination. So don't fret if you're trying, if you're very analytical and you're sort of trying to put things into their perfect boxes and you're very detail oriented, and you wanna make sure everything's right. Just let these be some good thought prompts to shape different directions that you could want to expand and grow in. So for success on your own terms, we wanna define your career success through these three lenses. Lens number one, what do you want to give in your work? What's the impact that you wanna have? And just like we were talking about, you might have defined pieces of that in the first two exercises here, but if there's any other way that you can flesh this out and make it more concrete or specific, totally do that here. Piece number two, what you want to receive through your career and through your work. The experiences and the knowledge that you want to get from this could be the skills that you get from this. What are the things that you want to have imparted on you? And then piece number three is what do you want to achieve? What are your measurements? And this could be some outputs too. Like achieve, one of the things that I have in my achieve list is that I want to write a full length book. I could put that into give too, so there's a little bit of cross pollination there, but that for me feels super clear that that's part of my vision for how I wanna be impacting and changing other people's lives. So again, give yourself a minute with give, receive, and achieve, and just jot down, sort of do a brain dump of the things that could feel really life-giving and satisfying and exciting to get to say that you have done in this space. And then again, if you wanna share yours to inspire everybody else, please go ahead and do it. And Lady Boss, I saw your question in the Q&A panel here, and we are gonna be sending out a recording of this that you'll be able to see all the slides in the deck afterwards. So if there are specific things that you wanna go back to and reference in here, you'll totally be able to see those. Lisa, you beat me to it. I was just about to chime in. <laughs> We're a good tag team, Mary, I love it. I love it. Let me look quickly in the chat to see if anybody is chiming in with any give, receive, or achieve things that are coming up for them. Um, seeing lots of cool things for the 10 out of 10. And Evan, it looks like your, your things here could absolutely be success on your own terms with owning your own business, becoming a professional speaker and mentor to coach veterans to get back into the workforce once they return home. And there is such a need for that. I actually got my start doing career coaching uh, in graduate programs and helping graduate students to get back into the workforce. And we saw a huge number of veterans coming through trying to get graduate degrees to have more civilian style work skills that they could bring to the table. And there's such a need to be able to translate all the accomplishments that veterans have had in the military space into more civilian language. That's awesome. Mm. 
Liz, I love it. Your give would be skills and gift that benefit others and make their job easier and more successful. Awesome. And then receive is a satisfaction of having helped more money, opportunity to travel, training opportunities, and hearing you help me from beneficiaries. Liz, I, oh, I was going to say, Liz also wanted you to chat a little bit more about achieve and what that could look like. Yes. Thank you for that, Liz. So achieve, I think of as just a lot of like accomplishment and action milestones. So for me, like I said, it could be at writing a book. It could be running a marathon. It could be having a family. It could be to whoever was talking about foster kids. It could be fostering, you know, 15 kids throughout your life or fostering to adopt and changing your family in that way. You know, this one doesn't have to be totally siloed into work. Although for you, it could be, you know, starting your own business, creating a TED talk, something else like that. Some people have a lot of stuff here and some people won't. So I'll throw that out there. Yeah, and Katie, I hear you that this one is hard. I, that's why I wanted to give us three different ways of thinking about this, because for some people, some of these are gonna feel super easy. And for other people, this one might be the easy one, just how your brain is wired. But the point here is to use all of these things to now transition into creating a first draft of what your career vision statement could be by looking for the trends and the connections and the little breadcrumbs that you've left for yourself in here. Mm, Liz, I love it. Make enough money to retire my husband slash manservant. I like that. So now let's move on. So we've got a couple minutes to share some career vision statements before we hop off. We've been building up to this through this whole time. So your mission right now is to spend a quick 60 seconds and look at the meaning maker work that you did, that sort of warm up that we did, your eulogy stuff, your uh, defining success on your own terms and 10 out of 10 work. And look at everything that you've written down and look for common trends, themes, words, groups of people, et cetera. You know, remember how we were talking about that we need to know the, the type of human that you serve, how you wanna be serving them, and then what your specific role in serving them might look like. So just go through, if you're doing this on your computer, you can bold or underline things or change the font color. If you're doing this written down somewhere, you can go ahead and circle things with your pen. But take a minute to look for what some of the commonalities are that kept popping up for you in different ways through these different exercises. Because so those trend lines are what we're going to use here as we transition into finally drafting what could be your professional career vision statement. Just like I verbally cued, look for the type of group you want to help. For some of you it was students, I heard foster kids in there, I heard helping people make their jobs more joyful and easier, the cause or issue you want to help or change, it's sort of like the bigger level picture of what you want to be contributing to. And then notice if there are any specific actions or contributions popping out for you. Because now we will transition into creating a first draft career vision statement for you. And like we've been saying, if you want to take some time and percolate on this and come back to this and revise it, go for it. As you'll see in the worksheet, there are a couple different places to try on different iterations and different versions of this. So you've got some space to be playful and creative and not get too sort of fixated on what's the one true perfect way for me, but trying on a couple of different fits to see what feels more resonant and life-giving for you. What I will say is that in your career vision, focus mostly on these first two pieces. In my career, I create or help blank, do or achieve blank. Because sometimes when we get into the, and here's exactly how I do it by doing X, Y, Z, by my outputs, sometimes that'll end up anchoring us in what we've already been doing a little too much. So just focus on, for right now, plugging in some of those trends that you saw into this person, group, or organization blank here, and then into the outcome blank here. So go ahead and take those trends and themes that you saw and just be playful and creative on that last page and just almost like a Mad Lib, just plug in some words to see how they feel and see what might be a potentially promising career vision statement for you. And if you are up for it, please feel free to share your first draft, even if you don't love it, even if it's not perfect and a right fit in the chat so that other people can again, gain inspiration and energy and motivation 
by hearing how other people are crystallizing things and having them come together here. Mm, Katie, it sounds like your theme words, like you're saying, are more personal, family balance, and leadership, but you may not know how to transition them into a career vision. Maybe for you, it could be, in my career, I create boundaries or structures that allow for me to have a thriving, incredible family by doing blank. And just play with plugging in different words there to see what feels good and see what fits for you. And you can always come back to these exercises and spend a little bit more time with them after the webinar on going back through and thinking about it with a more career focused lens or a more activity focused lens of things that could translate into career. So just let yourself play with it. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. Good, 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 Katie. I'm glad that was helpful. Lisa, we had a question come in. Um, so one attendee says um, they're, they're 54 and was laid off after 21 years on a job. Can these tools be used for looking for a new job or should I be using other tools? I'm struggling with getting started again. Mm. Well, thank you for asking for whoever threw that question out there. And what I would say is that this tool can absolutely be used to help you think about what types of potential jobs to be looking for and to help you focus on, okay, if I really want to help students or I really want to help veterans or I really want to help stay-at-home moms or I really want to help whoever that group is, that means that I can take a whole bunch of potential industries, potential organizations, and potential roles off the table. So you can absolutely use this. And I think that with respect to getting back started into the job search, this is a great beginning place to then start looking at what's out there, what might feel interesting to you to do, and then to shape your strategy for how you want to be applying to show up and be really exciting and motivating for hiring managers to want to talk to. So great question. Lisa, that's such great advice. Um, it's so hard to look for a job or even know where to start if you don't actually know what you want. So this career vision statement is so applicable um, throughout your career, no matter where you are in your career as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So it looks like we had a courageous Stephanie hop in and share her career vision statement draft here. She said, in my career, I create strong, thoughtful, compassionate team members or people that are fearless and have an anything is possible attitude that help their team members and customers achieve their own goals. I love it, Stephanie. You know, what that says is that you are a badass manager and that you need to be in empowered management roles where people really value that. And if you're helping members and customers achieve their own goals, you probably are more likely to be in a service-based organization or a software as a service type of organization. It's really focused on people and their behaviors. Love that. Oh, Suzanne, you chimed in too. I help clients achieve their goals by providing them with the tools of my experience to be successful. Yeah, and what I would challenge you to do is get even more specific. What type of clients do you want to help? And what are the specific tools you would be the most excited to help bring to the table? Ooh, Whitney, I love it. In my career, I create platforms, inspiration, and opportunities for women and students to express their gift, style, and voice. Yeah, and I'd love to hear more about what you're thinking with respect to platforms. If it's something like a, a community space where there's sort of like an open platform for conversation, or if it's more of something that's actually technical and sort of drawing on some of your background that I know in more of the tech space. Annette, in my career, I create design and imagery to help companies and organizations grow their clients. Beautiful, super specific, and really directional of where you want to go. And I know that we are a couple minutes over, so I wanna say thank you so much to everybody for giving me a couple extra minutes of your time and a jam-packed, super focused uh, couple minutes with us. I'll show this briefly to give you a couple ideas of books that you could go into for a deeper dive if you wanna keep nerding out on this because you have been loving it. Um, but I also wanted to share with you an offer from me that if this has felt good for you and you want to keep deepening your career vision statement, and your understanding of the drivers of what is fulfilling, juicy, and life-giving in work for you. On my website, getcareerclarity.com, I have an ebook that you can download completely for free, which is called The Roadmap to a Fulfilling Career. And it talks all about the drivers of career fulfillment, how to find them, how to figure out what yours are, and how to take action if they're out of whack. 
So if that is at all interesting to any of you, I totally want to invite you to come check it out, download it, read it, email me back, let me know what you think about it. Um, and it was such an honor and pleasure to get to be with so many amped up, passionate, badass ladies for the last hour. So thank you so much for that. And Mary, I will hand the microphone back over to you. Lisa, this was amazing and so inspiring. Um, and I just love all of the engagement and reading everyone's career visions and personal experiences. Um, I hope you all will continue the conversation with Lisa. Um, we will send you a link on how you can join her group directly on Perry Godboss. Um, and we would love to see you guys continue the conversation there. Um, but if you're at your computer now, you can just go to fairygodboss.com and search for career changers and Lisa's group will come up. It has her career clarity logo. It's very easy to find. Um, we'll be sending out this recording to you all this afternoon along with the worksheet. So if you want to revisit any of it, it will be here. And thank you all again so much for joining us. Um, and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much.